What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about a topic that you'll find very resonating, chances are, and will align with your experience, chances are, more often than not. And that is five reasons why LOs hate working with realtors and how to fix it. I've heard it so many times over the last 19 years working with mortgage pros. I hate working with realtors. I wish I could find another way to build my business. They're the necessary evil of my business. And perhaps you can relate. And maybe you've got mixed feelings. Maybe you've got a few that are amazing and the rock stars and there's positive energy and there's gratitude and there's appreciation and there's referrals and revenue and profits and there's chemistry and synergy. And then perhaps there's other realtors that are prima donnas that give you all kinds of drama and trauma and sleepless nights. And you just feel like this person is such an energy vampire. I wish this person would just go away, but I need their business. I need their referrals. So perhaps you've got that mixed bag feeling of both positive and negative association. But if you don't like working with realtors, or even if you might go as far as to say, I hate working with realtors, I like to say that if you don't like working with realtors, it's a bit like saying, I don't like sex. You're probably doing it wrong. That's a common symptom of doing it the hard way. So I want to unpack a few of the symptoms and objections that you might be facing and experiencing such that you're doing it the hard way before we dive in. So a common set of objections and or symptoms of doing it the hard way are realtors ghosting you, making promises, empty promises, delivering, uh, telling you to come back, call back later, and then you never hear from them again. They never answer their phone. They never answer the door. Maybe they tell you, I've already got a lender. I'm already working with a lender. Thanks, but no thanks. Maybe they go as far as to say, F off, stop, get lost. I don't want to hear from you. Whatever the case may be, all of those are repulsions. And in many cases, you may feel rejection around that. It's not fun, right? put yourself out there and have them slam the proverbial door in your face. It's never a fun experience. Human beings tend not to like to have the door slammed in their face. We tend not to like the feeling of rejection and chances are you're no exception. So I was reminded about things that get in the way of connection recently. You know, if you think of your business or yourself as a receptacle for connection, and you're a relational being, you want to cultivate meaningful, reciprocal relationships with the realtors. If you're not making that connection, let's think of yourself as that receptacle that's ready and open to relationship, to connection. And you're trying to make that connection, that meaningful connection. But if there's something in the way, then you're not going to have that connection. And I was reminded of this recently, actually yesterday. So it's very timely. For the last probably two or three months, I've been struggling with my iPhone with the lightning port that I use both to recharge my phone as well as for my uh, wired ear uh, headset because I've noticed that Bluetooth doesn't, doesn't work as well and is not as reliable as just plugging in a wired headset. So much more reliable. So the problem is, is that because my lightning uh, port, my lightning port was not working properly. I was having to wiggle and push and finagle and jimmy up to try and get the connection. And even still, it was very precarious. It was not a solid connection. And oftentimes I'd wake up in the morning and my phone would not recharge. It was almost dead because I did not make a solid connection before I laid down to sleep. So of course it didn't recharge. And I even went as far as to order extra recharging device that was one of those charging pads, which sucks because it doesn't charge nearly as fast as the cable charger does. So I would have to wait so much longer to recharge my phone because I didn't have that solid connection on my lightning cable. So my 14 year old son comes in yesterday and he's like, dad, give me your phone. 
he hears about the fact that my port's not working. So he does some research online, Googles it, of course. You know, these young whippersnappers nowadays, they're so good on computers and so good with technology. So this is just intuitive to me. He's like, dad, there must be something in your port that's causing you to establish a solid connection. I was like, okay, well, you know, what could it possibly be? It's a small slot. What could possibly go in there? So he starts creating a little device to clean it out, which... Of course, it didn't work because it was, he was trying to just use wood and he couldn't get the wood narrow enough. But I caught on to that. I was like, OK, well, what if I get a little needle and I scrape in there with a needle? Maybe I can see if there's something in there. So I take a needle and it's one of those, you know, safety pins. So I straighten it out and I start scraping with the pointy end of the safety pin. And of course, it was too pointy and it didn't really have the right blunt end to grab anything. So while I was finagling with it, I managed to, unbeknownst to me, it was a blessing in disguise. I broke it. And the top end that was like normally the part that actually hooks the pointy end of the safety pin in, well, that part broke off and it ended up being just a blunt wire with this hook at the end. I was like, Okay, perfect. I'll see if I can use that. Sure enough, it worked great. And I was pulling all this fluff, all this lint out of the connection port, my lightning cable port on my iPhone. It was crazy. I had like literally a pile of fluff by the end of it. And it made me realize. And of course, sure enough, I plugged my cable in and it worked perfectly. It was recharging perfectly. My headset now works perfectly. Imagine that with all that fluff and gack in the way. And it just was such a stark and timely reminder that the gack in our life, if we have gack in our life, in our strategy, gack in our approach, gack in our mindset, it's going to block the connection. We have this receptacle, but we're going to have gack in the way that blocks the connection and so chances are, if you hate working with realtors, it's because there's gack in the space that's blocking in the connection. And once you remove that gack, you're going to find it's just instantly you got that lightning power that recharges your battery. You've got that solid connection that allows you to communicate without disconnecting. And it's a battery charging experience versus a battery draining experience. How cool would that be without having to finagle it and stress it and, you know, do backflips to make it work. It's just perfect, established, powerful recharging connection. And that's what I want for you. That's what you want for you. The question is how can we create that? So let's dive in. I'm going to give you five reasons, five reasons why LOs tend to hate working with realtors and how to fix it, how to establish that solid connection, how to remove the gack from the receptacle. So you establish that solid connection. So the first reason is too many whiskers, not enough cheese. I talk about this a lot because realtors are a bit like mice, right? They love cheese. Cheese is yummy. Cheese is tasty. Cheese is delicious. They love cheese. They hate whiskers. They know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat, right? And so that's intuitive for a mouse, but realtors, believe it or not, are the same way. They love cheese like buyers and sellers. They don't like whiskers like you're an LO. That's a whisker, right? They don't want to hear that. So instantly, the, f the moment they hear you, mortgage broker, you're in the mortgage business, you're a mortgage specialist, you're a mortgage advisor, you're a mortgage agent, any of that mortgage stuff, they're going to instantly start to feel the whiskers. Now, I'm not saying that you hide that, but just keep in mind that they have a natural association that's not altogether positive to mortgage, especially when they have an, you know, a stampede of mortgage pros pounding down their door every single day. And they've been doing so for the last two years as rates have gone up. And the refi crabs have cried out, crawled up from underneath their refi rocks, clamoring after the same realtors to get more purchase business. So these realtors have been hammered. And so understandably, so they're not altogether 
associating you with positive sentiment, right? You'd probably feel the same way if you were in their shoes. So that's the first whisker. We can't really get around that. We do have to eventually, you know, let them know that we are in the mortgage business. We don't want to be ashamed of that be abashed of that. So that's baked into the equation. It's kind of like going into a store and the clerk says, may I help you? Is there anything you're looking for? And you say, no, I'm just what? I'm just looking. So there's that knee jerk reaction, that buyer defense mechanism that's baked into the equation. We have to find ways to overcome that resistance, to elicit trust, to build rapport, to establish a solid connection. But there are other whiskers can avoid. And those whiskers are things like great rates, great service, throw me a bone. Those are whiskers like I've got a great lead program. I got a great marketing program. I got an automation. I got a gizmo. I got a gadget. Uh, I got a gimmick, all these different things. I got great uh, flexible loan pro products and, and programs. All that stuff is just pure whiskers. They don't want to hear it. They've already tried it. They already have it. The broker already offers it. They already been there, done that, got the t-shirt. And so they get instant knee jerk reaction. Thanks, but no thanks. If you show too many of those whiskers. So that's the first reason why chances are you don't have a positive association with working with realtors is that you're showing too many whiskers such that you're chasing and they are running. And there's this repulsion energy where you feel like you're having to beg, bribe, chase, kiss butts, and all this chasing energy is never fun. I'm sure you would agree. It's not something you wake up at three in the morning and say, I can't wait to go out and cold call some more realtors. Like that's not the first response, right? So keep in mind that one of the reasons chances are why you're not getting the results you want is that you're showing too many whiskers and not showing enough cheese. Cheese would be the things they want, like closing more deals, earning more commissions, getting more buyers, more sellers, working smarter, not harder. That's the cheese. That's the benefit. That's what they want. But you got to give them what they want, which is the cheese, and remove what they don't want, which is the whiskers, the sales energy, anything that has them feeling like you're just another loan leech mortgage parasite trying to get loans from them. So that's the first reason. The second reason why most LOs hate working with realtors is that you're selling, you're selling. And the more you sell, the more you repel. So selling versus sifting and sorting to be a repelling energy. It tends to be something. It's a bit like if you're at a dance and someone's eyeing you up all the time and you're not all together attracted to begin with, there's already a little bit like, uh, I don't know if I really like that person. I don't know if I really like their vibe. I don't know if I like how they're dressed. I don't know how, if I like how they look, whatever the case may be. And they're just like all over you, like white on rice. They will not leave you alone. They're chasing you everywhere. The more they chase you, the more you want to what? Run away. So the opposite of that is doing a takeaway where you're hard to get, right? If you're hard to get and you're relatively beautiful or relatively handsome, and you don't have bad breath and you're well kept and you have some relatively good hygiene and your clothes aren't tattered, you have some sense of style. Chances are if you play some degree of humble, hard to get, but a posture of dignity and self-respect and, and honor and confidence and certainty, that's a very attractive energy, right? Chances are you're going to get chased versus be the one chasing so when you're selling, like, for example, give me, let me give you a, a really great example. Let's say that you have a buyer or a seller and you need a buyer's agent or a seller's agent to refer them to. And you don't yet have a buyer agent or seller agent in that particular area that's vetted. So you reach out to a few of the best top producing realtors that have the best reputation for either buying or selling in that area. And you say, Hey, I have a buyer who, or a seller who's looking for a top notch agent. Would you be open to having a conversation to see if we're the right fit to work together to send you some business? What's the chance they're going to be open to that? Pretty darn high, right? But if you are coming across like, Hey, my name is Dornell Dana from ABC Mortgage. I see you're doing great things. 
I just wanted to reach out and see maybe if we might have some synergy chemistry to do some business together. I have some great loan programs. I offer great rates, great service. I can definitely help you any, any of your uh, turn downs, anything that you can't get your current lender to close. I'm here for you. I'd love to see if maybe uh, we can work together, establish a meaningful relationship together. The more I go on and on and on selling myself, what's the chance they're going to be receptive to that? It's going down, down, down by the millisecond, right? Because I keep stacking on more and more of my energy that I'm attached to the outcome and that I'm selling myself on you versus I've got the cookie. Do you want what I got? I got the cookie. Do you qualify for what I've got? And I don't want to give you promises that you're even going to be the one who qualifies because I am interviewing a few different options right now. You're one of my top candidates, but at this point, I can't make any promises. There is a qualification process. I'm in the vetting process right now. Would you like to have a conversation to see if we have the right fit? Do you feel the energy shift, right? One, you're like the proverbial, you know, hot for what you got dude who's panting and begging leaning towards the pretty girl who's leaning away from and avoiding the kiss versus being the one who's attracting and has qualified hot for what you got candidates chasing them. Again, that's the energy you want to have, but it's not an easy thing to thread the needle on because there's so many different dynamics and the knee jerk reaction tends to be for LOs to chase realtors the default setting tends not to be, I've got the cookie. You may have noticed. So there are some nuances and that's one of the big reasons why smart, ambitious growth minded mortgage pros hire us at mortgage marketing coach.com is to learn those fine nuances, to learn the dance, to learn the lingo, the mindset, the skill set, the words that work, how to overcome the common objections, how to maintain that powerful, peaceful posture where you're not attached to the outcome where you care, but you don't care too much. You don't really care that where you enact FOMO, fear of missing out, where you can utilize what we call takeaways, where you're taking it away such that you enact and engage and activate the inborn proclivity of their human nature to have FOMO, fear of missing out. And then now they're like, oh crap, I don't want to miss out. And so now they're chasing you. But that's not an easy thing to figure out on your own, right? You can't just Google search it. You can't listen to a free uh, you know, ebook, you can't read an ebook or listen to a free podcast typically to learn this kind of stuff. Cause it's advanced ninja strategy that most people don't teach, which again is why most people are selling themselves and chasing and doing cold calling and why most realtors are repelling and why most loan officers hate working with realtors. It's this downward cycle of suck that we so often get caught up in. And that's why we have such a negative association to working with realtors. Now, the third reason why most LOs hate working with realtors is that they lack certainty. They lack certainty. So I call it wobble words, right? When you're kind of wobbly and weak in the knees and you're not really very sure of yourself and you're like, uh, uh, sort of, kind of, maybe, perhaps, um, if you're uh, open to it and notice the wobble, right? It's not attractive. It's lacking certainty. But when you speak with certainty, knowing that you are indeed a merchant of certainty and you hold that frequency of certainty, of confidence, being an advocate, a champion to attract and to vet the right partner, but you're not 100% certain if they're the right partner. So you're holding it loosely so they don't feel like you're ramming it down their throat. It's more like you're opening the door to have a conversation to see if we have the right fit, the right synergy. But if we don't, that's cool too. I'm cool either way. Notice there's a relaxed confidence that denotes and transmits the frequency of certainty. So this is one of the reasons why when you're making calls, I recommend having a pre-call routine. I'm a opponent of the magic morning routine where you get up earlier than you normally would feel comfortable with, go to bed earlier than you normally would feel comfortable with, 
because no greatness is ever created in your comfort zone. It's always going to be outside of your comfort zone. And as the late and great Benny Franklin would often say, early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. So go to bed a little earlier, get up a little earlier, go to the gym, go to yoga, do some kind of exercise, get your sweat on. If you're in the gym, turn off the music, put on some inspirational, motivational education, two birds, one stone, while your hands are busy, your mind is free, no extra time needed. And while you're increasing your health, you're also increasing your wealth and your wisdom. Two birds, one stone. What a great way to leverage your time. And then maybe you could do some visualization, some affirmations. If you're someone who considers yourself spiritual, maybe do some meditation, reading of the scriptures, prayer, those of things. These are all good things to do in the morning because when you win your morning, you win your day. Even your calling should be in the morning. Don't do it in the afternoon when you get sucked in the vortex of putting out fires and having your fireman cap on for multiple hours and you're feeling frazzled and fried and stressed. Do it first thing in the morning. And if you really want to kick things into high gear, go full blown badass and take a cold shower. I kid you not. Cold showers are one of the absolute best ways to electrify yourself into your champion self into your unstoppable self the energy the chutzpah the vitality the pep in your step the sparkle in your eye you get from it it's next level like i was dragging my butt before i showed up in front of the camera today and had i not taken a cold shower you'd be seeing a very different version of me the only reason why you're seeing pep in my step and sparkle in my eye and vibrancy on my face and an exuberance in my voice is because I took my cold shower. It washes away your whip self, your chump self, your excusitis, and what remains in its place, galvanized in its place, is your champion self. I call it operation shrinkage. The more you shrink, the more you soar. So yeah, you dudes might have a second belly button, you know, for a few minutes, but you know, at least you're going to be putting more zeros and commas in your bank account and living your blessed life, your best life. So so be it, right? Short term pain, long term gain. And it's all about cultivating that habit of being co comfortable, being uncomfortable, because you may have noticed everyone wants to be fit, rich and happy, but most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why is that? Because life success is all about swimming upstream. Success is not the default setting, nor is an abundant harvest in your garden the default setting. The default setting is weeds. The default setting is strife and suffering and struggle and lack and limitation. The default setting is not success. The default setting is failure and mediocrity. So if you want to rise to the top and be the best version of yourself and live your blessed life, your best life, and really be a shining star on the stage versus on the sidelines, you've got to cultivate the habit of being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And that's how you build certainty. Certainty and confidence is your reward for taking action in spite of the fact you don't feel like it, like it, in spite of the fact you're not in the mood, in spite of the fact that it's the last thing you want to do. That certainty, that confidence doesn't come from lack of fear. It doesn't come from lack of the resistance it comes from doing it in spite of think about it like this fear is wetting your pants courage and certainty is doing what you need to do with wet pants and so it's that feeling of the resistance and swimming upstream in spite of the that it's uncomfortable that allows you to build that mastery muscle that confidence mus muscle that certainty muscle that doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily by cultivating it as a lifestyle, as a way of life. It's not just a, I go to the gym once and expect to be fit for life, or I'm hopping in the shower to wash myself and I expect to be clean for life. That's not how it works, is it? It's a habit. It's a ritual. It's a routine. It's baked into the fiber fabric of your life and your lifestyle. So certainty is something you want to cultivate. It's a muscle you build. And once you start to cultivate that certainty and abide in that certainty and own that certainty and maximize and amplify and magnify that certainty and make that certainty, that frequency of certainty, your emotional home, what happens is it becomes your new normal and you start to 
from that place, communicate from that place. You start to lead from that place. And that becomes the anchor point from which you source your power, source your communication and relational dynamics that come from that place of certainty, not wobble in your knees in doubt, in lack, limitation, in imposter syndrome, in fear, in inadequacy. I used to live in all those energies. It sucks. Talk about a battery drainer. I used to live in that energy of I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm not enough. My value and my worth was in my performance. I felt like I had to perform in order to be somebody, in order to be significant, in order to be enough, in order to be adequate, in order to have value. What a BS lie that was. It wasn't until I owned my value in who I was born to be as a child of God, as an image bearer of God, and owning that identity that I have that identity from the moment I was conceived, I was knit in my mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me. He didn't start with you. So when we own that and we clear out all the gack from the receptacle, now we can start to be a conduit. We're not the power. We're not the light. We're simply a conduit of the light. We're a conduit of the power. We're like a garden hose or a, a fire hose. We simply are a conduit for the light to flow in us and through us to make a difference in the world, to bring light into the darkness. And so that's where certainty comes from. It's not in our own power. It's the power that flows to us and through us. And when you start to own that identity as a conduit of contribution, where the light flows in you and through you, it's not about you anymore. And you can get a, off and this narcissistic tendency to navel gaze and feel the sense of inadequacy that I was riddled with for years. It sucked my battery for years. And I just invite you to consider the certainty doesn't come because you're enough. Because when you look at your enoughness, there'll always be something missing. There'll always be something where it's just not perfect enough. It's just not quite at the level you want enough. You don't know enough. You're not experienced enough. You're not rich enough. You're not you know, healthy enough. You're not confident enough. You're not knowledgeable enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not handsome enough. You're not tall enough. You're not short enough, whatever it is, right? You're not fit enough. There's always this not enoughness that comes in the space if that's where you're looking for your power and your peace. But when you say, hey, I'm more than enough, to fulfill my purpose. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me. And you start to abide in that truth. All of a sudden now you get out of your own way. And that's where certainty is. That's where certainty lies, getting out of your own way. And all of a sudden, imagine that when you clear out the gack from the receptacle, now you have that solid connection, your solid connection with your maker, solid connection to other people. It starts with a vertical connection with God. And then it moves to a horizontal connection with relationships with your family, with your friends, your referral partners, with your clients. But if you can't feel comfortable in your own skin yourself, how can you feel comfortable in making and establishing a real connection with others? You can't. So it starts from the inside out. Wow. I got on a rant on that. That was not necessarily planned, but apparently I needed to hear it. So you're welcome. Reason number four. Reason number four why most LOs hate working with realtors is the attachment to the outcome. Attachment to outcome. They want to have certainty that the realtor is going to say yes. They want to have certainty that they're not going to be rejected. They want to have certainty that they're going to be rewarded for their time, that they're not going to waste their time. They want to have certainty that it's going to culminate into a reciprocal relationship where they're going to get referrals, revenue, and it's going to be well-rewarded risk. The problem is that's just not how life works, right? You don't go to Vegas with 100% certainty that when you pull the slot, you're going to be a winner. Or when you roll the dice, you're going to win at the poker table or whatever the game may be. You don't have that certainty. And same thing on the front lines of capitalism in the real world. Let's get real, right? It's going to take some grit, some hustle. It's going to take sifting through some rotten apples to find some red apples. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that it's a numbers game and it's all about winning the percentage game. And when you have, when you start to stack all these principles together, 
where you have the cookie, you have the cheese, you're not presenting whiskers, you're all cheese, no whiskers overture. So you have the words that work that get, get most of these realtors at least receptive and open to having a conversation. That's again, a big piece of what we teach here on planet prosper at mortgage marketing coach.com is how to structure that overture with the language, the text messaging, the emailing, the outbound calling, Everything makes a difference. It's the little things that make a big difference. And so if you don't think a little whisker makes a big difference, ask a mouse. All they need to see is one millimeter of that whisker and they're gonzo. It doesn't take much whisker to have them flee. And next thing you know, they're gonzo and you're spinning your wheels in this chasing cycle that has you feeling like you have an empty cup and you need the realtor to fill your cup. Empty with fear, empty with doubt, empty with inadequacy, lack of limitation and scarcity. When you feel that empty cup, you feel that doubt and fear come in. Whereas when your cup is full and you're in that frequency of certainty, gratitude, joy, peace, purpose, abundance, and you have total certainty that it's like a deck of cards. Let's say that all the cards, with the exception of the queen, the, the, the jack, the queen, and the king, the face cards, all the other cards are not the right fit. You have to sift through all those cards that aren't the right fit to find the ones that are. But when you know that there's a certain number of those face cards in that stack of 52, you don't whine, snivel, and complain when you don't get a king or a queen or a jack, do you? You just keep sifting and sorting. You're not trying to convert a one into a king. You're not trying to convert a five into a queen. You're not trying to convert a seven into a jack. You just sift and sort, sift and sort, because you know that the law of large numbers are going to work in your favor. And as you skill up and you put in the reps and you build mastery muscle, now you start to get paid not only on the face cards, but you also get paid on the jokers and the aces. So now you put in less time, less effort, less reps, but you're getting more, more revenue, more referrals, more referral partners because you've built mastery muscle because you put in more repetitions, just like going to the gym. How do you build that muscle? By showing up once and then just hoping that you get stronger? No. Day in and day out, you're building muscle. Day in and day out, no pain, no gain, no strain, no gain. But at the end of the day, if you don't put in the reps, you're not going to build the muscle. You know that. I know that. So attachment to outcome comes from feeling a sense of entitlement. And it's usually unwitting. It's usually like, I deserve to have them say yes. I'm afraid of them saying no. It's all unconscious. It's an unconscious, impulsive paradigm where we just don't want to have the risk of rejection. So we hide behind, I don't know enough. I need to learn more. I need more confidence. I need to study more. I need to become more knowledgeable. I need to push some paper around my desk. Sound familiar? These are all hiding places to avoid getting out there and you got to be willing to be bad before you can be good. Rarely is someone great out the gate. Usually it's the opposite. Every master was once a disaster. Usually you have to go through the process of being bad before you get good. But if something's worthwhile, it's worth being bad before you can be good. So we have a saying here on planet prosper and it's this, we win on every call. We either earn or we learn. Either way, we win. We win on every file. We either earn or we learn. Either way, we win. So we have a philosophy that as long as we're learning and growing, as long as we're getting more insight, more wisdom, more skill, more awareness, then we're successful. Then we're winning. So failure is not failure anymore. It's just back. Just another opportunity to start again more intelligently. And that's how you climb the mountain of success. You want to accelerate your speed of success? Take it from me because I've, I'm the poster child of you know, doing it the hard way and doing it the wrong way. That's one of the reasons why I'm speaking with you today with confidence and certainty because I've failed more than most of you. But it's through those failures that have gotten feedback 
to get stronger, better, sharper, wiser. So you want to increase your rate of success, increase your rate of it's called failing forward. And as we fail forward, we get more wisdom, knowledge, skill. We build more mastery muscle. And now you get to a place where you have that relaxed confidence where you just really don't care. And you know that you know that you know that you're deserving of success. And you know that you know that you know that it's just a matter of repetitions and just a matter of sifting through enough of the candidates that are on your list identify those who are the right fit, the right synergy, the right chemistry. You have zero doubt. You know, those face cards are in there. Those jokers and those aces are in there. As you get more mastery muscle, you get to cash in on all of those. But in the beginning, you just have to start where you are and do what you can with what you've got. It's all about getting out there and just knowing the right partners are coming at the right time in divine order in divine timing. The right partners are coming at the right time in divine order and divine timing. And an ever increasing rate, the right partners are coming. And when you start to affirm that, then there's no attachment to making a rotten apple, a red apple. You just sift and sort S W S W S W. Some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. You trust the process. Do you, can you see how that's going to make attractive to realtors and make the process more fun when you seek progress, not perfection. And when you're focusing on building muscle, mastery muscle, one day at a time, one rep at a time and embracing the process versus trying to be great out the gate and try to have a hundred percent yeses and trying to avoid risk. Can you see how that philosophy is going to help you make more risks in a way that's fun and rewarding and confidence building such that you get more reward? on the other side of all those repetitions and risks that you're taking because you're getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Can you see how that would make a difference? It makes all the difference in the world. Now, the fifth and final reason why most LOs hate working with realtors is because they're pandering to the realtor's requests and rules. They're pandering to the realtor's requests and rules. So in other words, it's kind of like the proverbial uh, go fetch dog that is panting at the owner's foot with the ball in their mouth, panting, saying, throw a ball, throw a ball, throw me a deal, throw me a deal. I'll take anything, any chaff. I'll take any, you know, hard egg to crack. Let me be your loan resurrection specialist. I'll take anything, throw me a bone. And it's this golden retriever type of mentality where it's like, anything you want me to do, I'll do it. And I hate to be brash, but you know what that makes you? The lone bitch. It makes you the lone bitch where they just see you as that and they use you and abuse you and get you to do anything that their current lender can't do just to see if they can squeeze some more juice out of the fruit. But you're still the last resort loan officer, the loan resurrection specialist. You're not the go to. You're like the secret mistress that, you know, when they're uh, in a spot where they're not happy with their current spouse or they're not in it the way they want from their current spouse and they can pull you out of the closet and uh, use you and abuse you to their benefit. And then they go back to their real love and the real commitment. They're not committed to you. They're committed to their existing lender. So Number one, that doesn't feel good. Number two, that's not your blessed life. That's not your best life. That's not the abundant life. Number three, you deserve better. And I'm here to tell you, you have it the way you want it. If you don't settle, would you not agree that you deserve better? And would you not agree that as long as you settle, you'll never have better? So here's what I submit to you. You can have it the way you want it if you don't settle. Do you need to learn a few things? Yes. Are there a few skills you need to develop? Yes. Is there a mindset that you will need to establish and perhaps some mind trash you'll need to take out? Chances are yes. Is there some gack in your receptacle that maybe we need to pull out in order to establish some solid connections with some solid realtors? Chances are. If you're not getting the results you want at the speed you want, with the flow and the finesse and the confidence you want, then chances are, yes, there's some gack we need to pull up from the receptacle, but all that stuff is doable. 
And here at Planet Prosper, we've been doing this for 19 years. This is not our first rodeo. We know how to help you with this if you are committed. If you are committed, and if you show up coachable, committed, resourceful, and decisive, we can help you establish relationships with the best realtors in town who are hot for what you got, pre-sold on you before they even talk to you, or at least receptive to having a conversation because you have the words that work that get them hot for what you got, and to get you booking more appointments in one week than chances are you booked in the last month or the last three months or the last year. I kid you not. I have people that we have just brought on in the last month that in the first two weeks of January have already attracted seven, nine, 10 new partners, literally within the first two weeks of this year. When's the last time you got those kind of results? If the answer is never or a decade ago, then you might want to look at upgrading your skill set, your mindset, and your marketing superpowers such that you can make that your new normal. Don't envy that. Join that. Hey, they're no better. They're no smarter than you. They just have some skills and some know-how that you don't yet have. And the problem with not knowing this stuff is you're paying a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing right? Not knowing how to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, not knowing how to shift from being the annoying pest to the welcome guest, not knowing how to flip the script. So the realtor needs you more than you need them. Not knowing how to structure your day for maximum productivity, not knowing how to build a stable, a solid stable of top producing realtors who send you all their business all the time, sending you one, two, three deals a month, not a year, a month, so you become irreplaceable, indispensable, and they start sending you all that business all the time. And you become impervious to market conditions. You become impervious to the market slowdowns like we've faced over the last two years because top producers are least and last affected by market downturns versus first and most. They're the ones who are gobbling up market share right now. They're not going and having to go back to nine to five prison like the mediocre middle. Those are the guys that are already driving Uber, selling solar and back to nine to five prison because they didn't have systems in place. They didn't have momentum. They did not have the lion's share of the clientele and the listings like the top producers do. So the holy grail in this business, friends, to win consistently in any market as opposed to just a fair market is learning the secret sauce to attract versus chase top producing realtors and to be able to pick and choose who you want to work with to have the pick of the litter where if someone doesn't feel right to you there's resistance there isn't sufficient synergy rapport chemistry you just fire them and replace them and you have the ability to do that at will so you're never settling you're living on purpose with purpose with prosperity perennially because you have that superpower would you not agree that is the holy grail in this business? Absolutely, it is. And if you don't know that to be true, chances are you haven't been in this business for more than a day. Because if you have been in this business for more than a day, you know that to be true. So if you're listening to this and you're watching this and you're like, Doran, I'm glad you took a cold shower today. Thank you for bringing the heat. Thank you for bringing me some truth bombs I needed to hear today. Thank you for rattling my chain and shaking my proverbial cage. I needed this. I needed the eye opener that if I don't like working with realtors, it's kind of like sex. I'm probably doing it wrong. And if that's you and you're sick and tired of doing it wrong, you're sick and tired of leaving that, all that money on the table. You're sick and tired of worrying where the next deal is going to come from, worrying about how long it's going to take before the Fed or the Bank of Canada, depending on what side of the border you live on, cuts rates sufficiently such that you can start to capture more refi business. If you're sick and tired of relying on refis or being in stagnation, regression, prison with the sleepless nights, the worry, the anxiety, the uncertainty, the frustration that comes with that, and you're ready to build a recession proof business that allows you to build a consistent steady flow of purchase business from the best quality partners with the best quality borrowers who are hot for what you got pre-sold on you before you even talk to them with higher than normal average commission per deals 
So they're easy to close. They're more conventional type deals versus the alternative lending or the, you know, uh, non-conventional type deals, non-QM type deals. And you're wanting to just have an easier flow, a steadier flow of consistent business. And you want to be able to have that as your new normal where you just have peace of mind. You can just let your hair out and relax and exhale just rest easy knowing the money just keeps flowing because you've got the secret sauce to be able to attract top producing realtor partners at will on your terms, not theirs. Then I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. You'll hop on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We lift up the hood on your business. We just have an honest conversation. This is not a sales call. It's just a clarity call to see where you're at now and where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, we'll be the first to advise you to pass, recommend something else that's better for you. Either way, you will leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're really not fun, then we won't. But hopefully you're fun. And if you are, it'll be a fun call because we're fun too. That being said, this is really just about illuminating your situation to see where you're at, where you want to go, whether or not we can help you and what it's going to take to really propel you to that next level in your business and to thrive, not just survive. And to be able to do that consistently long-term, regardless of rates, inventory, inflation, hyper-competition, or any market conditions. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call again at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Looking forward to connecting with you if that's you and establishing a connection. We're all about connection. We're not about, you know, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of uh, these types of offers come with people who are attached to outcomes. And there's this sales breath halitosis that comes with it where it's like, it's super repelling and yucky, right? Because it's like, this person doesn't care about me care about establishing a connection. They just want to make a sale. I want you to know that's not us. I, I, I have a feeling you picked that up just from the communication today that we live this. Like this is not just theory. This is the mantra. This is the fiber and fabric and the rhythm of our life. This is our life energy. This is how we live every day. Because frankly, once you tap into this energy and you tap into this paradigm, you'll never want to go back. You'll never want to go back to being attached to outcomes. You just want to serve and serve with a full heart and establish meaningful connections. And so I invite you, if nothing else, just to check it out for yourself of what it looks like for someone to lead by example with the ethos of not being attached and being purpose driven and really caring and showing up with certainty and illuminating with clarity and having heart connection to purpose to make a difference light in the darkness. If you want to just check out like, what does it look like to model that ethos, to model that paradigm, that mission, that purpose driven way of showing up? That's another great way to certainly drive you to have the most illuminating clarity evoking call chances are you've ever had in your entire career bar none. So if that's you book a call mortgage marketing coach.com forward slash apply. Well, that's all we got for today, friends you got some value from this. Uh, I've been blabbering for a while here. So uh, hopefully something here has made a difference for you that's landed for you. Maybe it's just a healthy reminder. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So if that's you, that's great. Because repetition is the mother of all learning, father of all skill, birthplace of all mastery. Maybe you got some new distinctions as well you have not thought of before. Either way, I invite you to apply it to your business and see if it doesn't absolutely transform how you make Connections with realtors and that it becomes fun and rewarding and energy charging. The GAC is removed. You're establishing a solid connection that is really battery charging. That's what I want for you. But it doesn't happen because you just heard this podcast. It happens because you apply what you learn from this podcast. So do that. Take one, two or three things you got from today, write them down and 
make it your goal over the next week to apply it to your business and to your life and see if it doesn't make a massive difference in your life, in your business, and in your ability to establish meaningful connection with top producing realtors. And of, of course, if you want some additional help, you know how to reach us, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about the five reasons why LOs hate working with realtors and how to fix it. Go forth, bring your light, shine it bright, shine it with certainty, and have your heart connected to purpose to make a difference for someone else. Chances are that will lead you more and more into your blessed life, your best life. Make it a great day, and we'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Make it a great one. Thanks for hanging with me today.